I'm Dr. John Warner. I'm the CEO of UT Southwestern University Hospitals, and we're here for a very special day and the culmination of what has been a very special several weeks for the medical center here and for the Jones family. So I'll be brief. Um, you're here to hear from them, not from me. Um, but I would like to acknowledge two things um, before we begin. First, I'd like to thank the Jones family, Gavin, Carrie, and Isaac, um, for entrusting UT Southwestern with the care of your family. This has been a great week for us. We're excited for you and looking forward to get to know you even better as we, uh, as we spend the next few weeks together in the care of your precious children. Second thing I'd like to do is to acknowledge our team. This has been a uh, Olympic type effort over the last few weeks and I'm very proud of what we've done here. You'll hear from Dr. Gary Burgess, our medical director of the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit and from Dr. Patricia Santiago Munoz, um, who is the, uh, the uh, Jones obstetrician, but I also wanted to recognize a couple of other members of our team, Dr. Robin horsegger Bear and Dr. Julie Lowe, important members of our obstetrical staff, which assisted with this uh, very uh, impressive uh, event. And then second, I'd like to acknowledge our nurse managers um, of the neonatal intensive care unit and our labor and delivery service. There's Aziza Young, who's our uh, neonatal intensive care unit manager, and Patricia McBean, who is our labor and delivery uh, manager as well. Again, I'll stop there. Um, let me just quickly introduce the, uh, the uh, participants in today's um, press conference. First of all, Dr. Gary Burgess, who is the medical director of our neonatal intensive care unit. Um, there's uh, right next to him is our is Gavin Jones, the proud father, Isaac, the very proud brother, <laughs> and Carrie, the very special mother, and uh, and then on the end there is Dr. Patricia Munoz um, Santiago Munoz, who's the uh, obstetrician for the uh, Jones family. So thank you very much for being here. I'll let these guys kick it off with questions and the statements. Thanks. I'll start, I guess. Thank you. I'm Gary Burgess. I'm the medical director of the neonatal ICU, and uh, it's been a pleasure to meet this wonderful family. Uh, the five babies are doing quite well right now. They're doing as expected. We always have little issues uh, in the first week of life with these uh, infants. Uh, the first three, A, B, and C, which are Will, David, and Marcy, are on uh, nasal prongs, giving them uh, continuous positive airway pressure. Uh, they're doing quite well, and hopefully we can get remove those within the next two days. Um, Grace, the E quintuplet, uh, is, uh, is on a mechanical ventilator. It's a conventional ventilator, breathing at uh, a rate of 25 breaths per minute, and is very stable, and we've been able to wean quite a bit so far today. Um, and then there's Seth, the D quintuplet, and He's been the troublemaker, but he's doing quite well. He's very stable. He's on a special kind of ventilator called a high-frequency oscillator ventilator. And I think Isaac here can uh, imitate what it does to Zeth. What does he do? <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing well. We've been able to wean his oxygen quite a bit. And uh, they're all getting uh, nutrition, uh, some IV. Um, uh, Seth is getting all IV nutrition, and no, Seth, Grace is getting all IV nutrition. Um, the first four uh, quintuplets are um, getting both IV and oral nutrition. So, again, they're doing as expected, and they're very stable right now. Well, if I'm if I'm expected to say something, I will. Um, like uh, Dr. Warner said, my name is Patricia Santiago Munoz. I'm one of the uh, maternal fetal medicine uh, physicians in, in our department of OBGYN. And uh, again, it's been my pleasure taking care of Carrie and, and by association, Gavin and Isaac. Uh, I've always told Dr. Burgess that I had the easy job. I was only taking care of one patient, and uh, he was going to take five. So, uh, but then I guess you could say that I took care of six for some time. Uh, and it was uh, always exciting. I think uh, I owe everything of how well it went. You know, last Thursday really has to do with those ladies back there. Um, especially, I want to thank Aziza because that woman, hello, the the color coordination uh, really, you know, was important. You know, and getting everything the way that it should have been. You know, that that morning um, we talk about you know the special code that we developed. You know, where. Pages went out to everybody, and everybody knew what code five meant. And uh, I just felt that even as I was the one responsible for initiating that code, I just thought it was so exciting. Um, and I think everybody felt it last Thursday morning, and uh, we're just so excited to have all of them here. 
and we hope that you know to see them through the next few weeks so they end up going home safe and sound and, and mom and dad's arms Yeah, we couldn't. We could not have asked for a better um, prenatal and hospital experience. It's just blown us away. Um, we have so many people to thank that if I even started, I would probably cry, and I'd also forget a lot of names. So, um, But I just have loved the medical staff here, and I do also want to mention Sandra, who coordinated a lot, too, and um, the residents, Dr. Lytle and... Dr. Lowe, who massaged my back during labor, which was very important. <laughs> and Dr. Santiago was sweet and was patting my hand, and that was just very comforting. And Stephanie just coaching me through it as my nurse that morning. So it was, um, Dr. Santiago said that it was exciting, and I certainly was very excited. Obviously, you know, there was some nerves, but it was, I have to say, exciting to think they're coming, and I didn't choose this. One of the babies broke the water, and you know clearly this is God's timing. It wasn't it wasn't called by any of us except that Dr. Santiago obviously knew. Well, this isn't stopping, so <laughs> time to code to, to call the code rather. Yeah, we were. It's this has been an amazing experience for all of us. Uh, we, I mean, six months ago. Carrie and I and Isaac could never have imagined we'd be <laughs> sitting here saying we've got five more kids in the family. Um, definitely not uh, our plan, but the Lord knew exactly what he was doing, and we are trusting in that. And we know he is good, and uh, we're so thankful for how much he's done for us mm -hmm. and having five, five beautiful children. You're right. Say that again, honey. He has really blessed us. He has. Isaac's been praying for five years for a sibling. <laughs> and so I fully blame him. <laughs> One for each year, so. <laughs> we, and, um, we didn't even do IVF. I was on shots to help um, because I'd had, dif I'd had an ectopic rupture. And so I was having difficulty conceiving again. So I was taking shots, but we did not even do IVF. And so these five were a huge surprise. We could not be in a better place. We are just beyond thrilled with the NICU team. We, there's no place we'd rather have our babies be. And it's just amazing how much they know. Yes, sir. So, so let me just take a step back and, and sort of speak to me in regular folks' terms as opposed to all these doctors around you. Okay. <laughs> so, so when you say, didn't plan it. I mean, when I hear quintuplets, I'm thinking in vitro, all that kind of stuff. So take me through that process. For you. Yeah, um, uh, it was just that I had had, Isaac was very easy to conceive, and then I had an ectopic rupture in 2007, and it destroyed the tube on my left side. Um, and for some reason, I just could not conceive again. We kept trying and trying. And um, so we upped it to the shot level. And um, I was, to I had to help with ovulation to increase the number of eggs and all that. And uh, one problem I had was a chronically thin lining. And so one month I asked if we could, you know, or what can we do about this? And they said, well, you can take a shot every day instead of every other or whatever it was. And so that was the, the big month because we didn't realize how much the shots were going to affect the output of eggs. And um, we didn't take, well, yeah. An assistant didn't take into account the number of eggs on the side that had no um, tube. And I later, when I found out I was pregnant with quintuplets, I was like, how did this happen? And so um, looked up and found that they can actually float over to the side with the tube about 30% of the time. So that's our story. <laughs> we're sticking to it. I guess we're sticking to it. Now, now, I understand you all live in Australia. Right? No, Papua New Guinea. It's an island north of Australia. So how in the world did you end up here to deliver these babies? That's why. Tell me about that one. Yeah. Well, we're missionaries over in Papua New Guinea, which is just north of Australia in the South Pacific. Um, and every few years, we come back home. State, the United States is our home country. Um, we come back for a furlough of several months just to um, see family and friends. And, uh, and so during that time, while we were home, we were getting the medical help to help conceive again. And so that's, that's why we've been here. So we go over for about three years at a time, come back for nine months or so. And, and you then, were upgrading your training in the yeah, and I've yeah, I've been doing training as a pilot, and and so um, we've just been 
uh, that's why we're here, and we're th very thankful we were here for that. Didn't expect home, to stay this long. Um, it's Dun well, for me, it's Duncanville. Yeah. I grew up Dallas in California, area. and my family's still there, but we're, um, Carrie's family is here in, in the Duncanville area, and uh, so this has been our, our main roots have been in the Dallas area for the past. It's where we got 10, married and yeah. lived for the first six years. Yeah, yes. I have a more personal question, but I've got to go back to what Steve Pickett asked about the first. So, uh, in layman's terms, you did use fertility drugs. Is that, yes. That, that simply I, you did use fertility drugs? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you were surprised to have five, to have multiple. Oh, multiple yeah. yeah. <laughs> the intent was to have one. <laughs> so there's no history of multiple births in either your family? Actually, my grandfather was a twin. Okay. And a, it was a, he was a fraternal twin. And my cousins are twins. So there is a bit of a history. Yeah. How long have you guys been, on the personal stuff, how long have you guys been uh, missionaries? Since 2003, and we've been overseas. We had my son right kind of before we were supposed to head overseas, and um, uh, that delayed us a bit. And we've been in Papua New Guinea since July of 2005, home on two different furloughs, both for Gavin to um, upgrade his helicopter, uh, first from fixed wing to helicopter, and then upgrade in within the helicopter world to an instructor. Two, two furloughs since 2005, including this one, or would this be the third one? This, this is, is the second. This is the, the second. second yes, sir. And they've both been longer than expected, this one for a very good reason. <laughs> <laughs> and how long of a break will you have now before you return to the missionary work or your regular jobs? Um, we're, that's, that's hard to say. And we're expecting a couple months at least, at minimum, I would say, in the NICU. And so I'm going to be off, off work for a while for, to help with that. Um, I am doing some remote work uh, with, with our organization over, over in New Guinea by computer and also uh, doing some, we've got a, a local center here for Wycliffe in, uh, in Dallas, so I'll be doing some work there once I'm able, so probably 12 weeks or so, something like that. But we don't intend to go back to Papua New Guinea until Dr. Burgess and others say that the babies are stable and ready to live at 5,000 feet, which is because we're in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. Um, and we'd like to ideally go back in July so we can get Isaac started in third grade and they start fairly early there in the school year. But we'll just see how the babies are and right now that's our biggest priority. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, well, we started the blog, oh, I don't know, two, two and a half years ago and hardly ever touched it, did anything. <laughs> and um, because I didn't feel like there was a whole lot to talk about <clears throat> for the most part. And we do have several hundred people who, who uh, we keep in contact with reg regularly who are praying for us and are, who are allowing us to be overseas by just prayer and financial contributions. And so that's, that was a tool that I started just to keep in contact with people. And then once um, once we heard about the quintuplets, then it was just made it much easier to be able to contact many more people or notify people with every new thing. And our biggest thing is that we know that prayer works and that we have a great God and many people who want to pray for us. And so that's been our biggest focus. That's why we don't we don't want to be private about this because we know more people are praying for us. I mean that's selfishly, but um, I, we know that. Um, God is good and he'll be taking care of us. And there's so many people that just want to be part of this story and hear about it. And um, I think a lot of people have also been able to be a lot more open and share their own stories with us um, and, and help us with just advice and whatever else. And so we pray that years down the road we'll be able to do that likewise with others. And Isaac has something to say along those lines. Oh, it's an amazing story. All this time it was just amazing. Yeah, he told me it's an amazing story orchestrated by God. Uh, Dr. Uh, yes. you talked about the team and the plan, uh, these codes. And take me back to when did you start to orchestrate that if they were born in 27 weeks? So we found out about Carrie, you know, actually several months before she actually made it back to Dallas. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gavin, but you were all in North Carolina for your training, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the first phone call came through Dr. Horsager, and you know she knew we were going to be receiving, you know, Carrie at some point in the pregnancy, and that wasn't until 90 to 20 weeks. So we probably started planning when she finally made it to Dallas. 
Um, and then I think the it was both Dr. Horsager and Aziza Young behind you who kind of took the reins of that whole, how many people do we need to include in all these meetings? Uh, and they were weekly meetings for a while, starting I would say at around 22, 23, uh, including you know, separate meetings with you know, Gavin and Carrie and for example, Dr. Burgess and Aziza to address specific questions. You know, what if, you know, worst case scenario, you go into labor at 23 weeks, you know, borderline of viability. And that was one specific, you know, session with them. Um, we orchestrated meetings uh, with the anesthesiologist, you know, Dr. Maggie Craig, to meet with them and plan, okay, what are all the things that could happen, you know, that your anesthetic needs. Um, there were meetings uh, basically to cover staffing, you know, things as simple as not just, you know, the physicians and the nurses and the respiratory therapists who are going to be there, but who's going to be the radiologist, who's going to be reading these, the, the radiology tech, who's going to be taking all the x-rays of these babies when they're immediately born. You know, we think of one, you know, baby in the intensive care unit needing many, many medicines, blood, acutely, and, you know, Bill Tharp and pharmacy, you know, had to know about that, you know, in advance. Okay, if I'm going to have five babies all at the same time that are going to have very, very acute needs, how can I plan ahead of time? So uh, I think it was, you know, uh, again, God's hand in many ways, you know, that they happened to deliver this past Thursday morning. We had just done an ultrasound the day before. We knew exactly what kind of weights we were playing with, so we had that information to to give to the neonatologists, to the pharmacists. Things just kind of happen in a very, yeah. like, planets line up is, is what I can say. I would like to say that I actually went to 27 in five days. <laughs> <laughs> I cling to every day. I'm so grateful for every day they got, but because there were five of them, Dr. Burgess was saying that they're more immature for their age. They're more like 27 weekers than 28 weekers. Oh my, uh, it's, it's good that it's been a good morning. <laughs> I couldn't have answered this question last night. Um, not that it had been a bad day at all, but I, um, uh, yeah, there, I think the amount of hormones with five babies is probably pretty sizable, and it was bad enough with one. <laughs> um, um, and just having five preemies in the NICU and right now being really, or having been really concerned about the two smallest ones. Um, my emotions, you know, obviously they vary hugely depending on how the babies are doing, even though really it's, we've been very, very blessed. And I know they're in the best possible care, so I don't doubt that at all. Um, but yeah, I've heard a quote once that you're only as happy as your saddest child. And that's certainly been true for me, like, when one of the babies was just having something really routine done. He was just having an IV removed. Seth, the littlest boy, he was just crying, but he couldn't cry because he had the ventilator in. And so it was this soundless wail and the crunched up face. And you know, all they were was just very gently, at that point, all she was doing was just applying a little bit of pressure to his little wrist. You know, but he was so upset that I just bawled with him. So, um, it's, yeah, I'm very emotional, <laughs> but very happy. Got to hold David. That was an emotional, wonderful. I cry a lot out of joy, too, I have to say. Yes, ma'am. How did you guys decide on the five names? Can you talk us through the process? Sure. Gary took over most of the process. Um, <laughs> we've, we've wanted to name. Yeah, what? Well, we, most of, uh, we just, Really, like the Bible, so we chose the name the yes. from the Bible and from our family. Excellent yeah. answer. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, so we, we like it. We're sticking to that. Which one did you choose, Isaac? Which name did you choose? Um, David Stephen. Yeah, we yeah we allowed Isaac to choose one of the names with veto power, of course, um, <laughs> and so yeah he chose David Stephen. I I chose Seth Jared, and of oh course my. Carrie and I worked together on the rest of them. But uh, yeah, um, several are family names, several are uh, are just names from the Bible, or ones we've always just really liked. We like them all. So <laughs> yeah, they're all either a family name or a biblical name that has a special meaning to us and. Marcy Jane is named after the two grandmas. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Burgess, uh, since you're as head of NICU, uh, help 
help you uh, understand the, the distinctive aspect of this delivery for this facility, for this hospital your team? Well, the, knowing that they were as premature as they were, we had a nurse practitioner or a physician, a, re, a respiratory therapist, a neonatal ICU nurse per infant. So the total, we ended up having four doctors there, uh, two nurse practitioners, and then uh, the single nurse and respiratory therapist per baby at the delivery. We, uh, Sandra Gosser, one of our nurse practitioners, worked with Jeanette Coleman about the whole process of how to organize the, the bed uh, prior to delivery and how to organize the uh, resuscitative equipment. Um, so it was a process that took about a month uh, to uh, orchestrate and finalize. And, um, and then when the time came, everybody had a beeper and we came running in. They did. Correct. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dr. Santiago thought she would be lucky if she could get the mother to 25 weeks, and she exceeded that. Can you, can you speak to that a little bit? Because that really goes to the heart of this team building thing. I think a lot of us are really something we're trying to grasp. But you guys were prepared for that. You got to think that a quintuple pregnancy is something, first of all, rare uh, in nature. Um, and, and just going back from the the general rule that a term singleton pregnancy is 40 weeks. You kind of have to subtract three weeks per additional baby, you know, 37 for twins, 34 for triplets, et cetera, et cetera. And you make your way down to 28, 29 weeks. So again, we were a couple of days short of 28, but pretty much hit it on the mark of what we could have estimated or expected for a quintuple pregnancy. Dr. Burgess answer that. <laughs> Will weighed two pounds ten ounces at birth. David wore, uh, weighed two pounds six ounces at birth. Marcy two pounds even. Seth weighed two pounds one ounce and Grace weighed one pound twelve ounces. They've all lost a little weight which is expected. 27 week infants usually lose weight for about a week and then they start to regain uh, but they're doing exactly as expected. Well, uh, generally, on average, most babies can be discharged around 36 weeks of corrected age. So that would be, you know, eight or nine weeks for them. Now, some, such, for example, Seth, who may have more issues with his respiratory tract, uh, may, may require his hospitalization a little bit longer. But we're hoping most of them go home at 36 weeks corrected age. We'll see when I go home. It's, um, I just crave them all the time. But I also realize that I'm not gonna be able to provide what they need, like nutrition-wise, if I'm not getting enough sleep. So it's a balancing act. Right now it's easier because I really can't hold them um, for very long periods of time at all. I've only held one of the babies. It's fun to go when they're changing their diapers or taking their temperature and be able to participate in that. But. Um, it, I think it'll, yeah, I think it'll hit when it's time to go home. Which one did you hold? Huh? Oh, I got to hold David, the second biggest boy. And what was that? What was the occasion? He doesn't have an umbilical line, so I didn't need to worry about disturbing that. Oh, yeah, when, when I was done with my hour of getting to hold him and had to give him back, he started really crying. And as soon as they got him in the, in the isolate, I could lay my hand on him and he stopped immediately. And then when they had to do, you know, what they had to do with him at that time, and I took my hand away, he started crying again. And it was really <laughs> precious that he responded well. And during the time I was holding him, all of his stats were like perfect. So that was really exciting for me that he already responded to me you know, as his mother or to that skin contact, it was really neat. When do you get to go home? Um, I'm not supposed to answer that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because you guys have followers around the world because of your blog, have you been getting like large shipments and diapers from people who are following you? Or, or any, anything like that? Well,
we're hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't received yet. anything. Yet. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet, but there are several companies we know that once they see the children's birth certificates, they'll be able to help out. So, um, but uh, we know that we're going to be going through thousands and thousands of diapers. We've, the books Diaper we've companies reading, are not among the ones that have offered to help out. I just want to say that. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, we um, we'd love to help. <laughs> Yes, we've had um, our church, our home church, Faith Bible Church in DeSoto has been very um, helpful to us. Uh, just we've had so many people say to us, anything you need at all, just let us know. And so our needs are being that's our needs are being met so well. We're kind of running out of as far as, you know, just physical, what do we need right now as far as bringing things or, so we're just, um, meals mostly very blessed by meals and mm -hmm. yeah, just, it's, it's been amazing. So. I want to ask this as delicately as possible. We're talking about five births. Was, was there ever the possibility of more uh, given the drugs, the fertility drugs that were taken? Did it, did it ever look like there might be more? Oh, I sure hope not. Yeah, that's a question that, that we couldn't answer because we only met, you know, Carrie at 19 weeks. I don't know if earlier in the pregnancy there was ever no, there an was ultrasound where they thought that they saw more follicles or... From the very beginning, um, there were only ever five sacs and five little beans at the beginning in each sack. Or, and not in each sack, thank goodness, <laughs> per sack. We had many many sonograms before we got here, and many since we've been here, and each one of them has been pretty, pretty firmly five. They've you know seen all five of them, and so I don't think that was ever called into question once no. the, we first found out. And when did you when, when did you first find out? What, what was the day, you know the day of that? Of course, you did. It was I think March 9th. And you were where? I was in North Carolina, and I was just hoping that they would be able to verify one heartbeat. And I was feeling pretty sick, so I thought, yeah, there's probably a baby in there. And I bet it's a girl, because um, I wasn't sick with Isaac. Yeah. Isaac, now you have five. What do you think? Uh, I think it's amazing. I think it's a blessing. It's a blessing from God. Two parents delivered. You wanted a brother, wanted a sister. They delivered with five. Yes. Yeah, the ultrasonographer, when she turned on the machine, I thought she was looking at an ovary because I've had my ovaries, I've had ultrasounds on my ovaries to see how many follicles are forming and all that. And I thought, why is she looking at my ovary? And I thought, oh, I have had some, a little bit of pain on that side. And then I realized, what side? She's not, she's not angling to a side. And then I noticed that in what I thought were the follicles, there were little beans, as I described them. And my brain just shut down. Like, I just couldn't, I, my reason would not accept that there were possibly five babies on the screen. And she said, are you guys expecting multiples? Are you prepared for multiples? Are you guys prepared for multiples? <laughs> and I said, sort of. And Gavin said, should we be? <laughs> and she said, uh-huh. And he said, is that triplets? And she well, I said, is that twins? And then you said triplets, I think. I, and yeah, there were three <laughs> on the screen right then. And she said, I'm thinking four. And she, and so at that point, I just started praying like mad that one of them would have a heartbeat because it just didn't seem, I, I wasn't registering that all four could be alive. It just, I, even though I've read about multiples before, so I'm praying that one of them will have a heartbeat. And so she went from each, you know, baby to baby, each one measured perfectly for gestational age and had a strong heartbeat. And then as she's measuring the fourth, I thought, oh my goodness, please tell me that's one she's already measured because I saw another one. Like, <laughs> And she said, and there's number five. <laughs> and I just sank into my chair. <laughs> Gavin's face my was My shoulders a... have never drooped so low. <laughs> and I just started laughing. And when she yeah. said number five, Gavin joined me. Because yeah. at that point, what can you do? You just laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Burgess, on that, uh, that again, could you speak to the, uh, sort of the inherent risks of oh my goodness. multiple births, particularly you know, like if you're on know, twins, triple quarters, which comes up with an alike? Well, the risk basically is uh, um, 
they're all parasites to mom. They, they, take, they drain a lot of nutrition from mom. Um, her mom had anemia throughout much of her pregnancy, requiring weekly uh, iron infusions just to try to maintain a low red blood cell count, uh, just enough. Uh, so the nutrition component and the oxygen delivery to the, each of the babies can be compromised uh, when you have multiples, especially more than three. Uh, there's not enough room for normal growth of placentas, much less the babies. Uh, so that's the risk. And, uh, a lot, and typically, as was the case with uh, the Jones quintuplets, uh, the first babies are usually a lot easier to deal with in the delivery room, and it's the, set, the, the four, third and the fourth and the fifth that can be more of a challenge because, again, during the delivery process, things become, can become compromised, blood flow to the babies and so forth. So uh, that was the case. They were a little, the, the D and the E quintuplets were a little bit difficult, more difficult to deliver or deal with in the delivery room, but they came out uh, just fine. It took a few more minutes. Uh, yes. What's the best piece of advice that you got going through this process? Oh, my. That God did this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that actually is kind of the best piece of advice because I was not happy about it the first two weeks, which now I just can't even imagine because they're all so precious to me. But people kept saying, God did this. You know, you didn't choose this. He will be with you, you know, and sending Bible verses and stuff. And when I didn't feel well and, you know, when I was itching from head to foot because I had cholestasis, um, it was a really good thing to cling to. It was what God wanted to do in life. Yep, it was what God wanted to do in our lives, and he was faithful. Yeah, and take it one day at a time. That's also been, <laughs> the ladies are all nodding because they've pretty much all told Especially me that at now. some point. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, there's a lot of work to be done, especially when the babies come home. So we, <laughs> we're definitely going to need a lot. I mean, that's that's most everybody's response. Like, oh, five, you're going to need a lot of help. And, and they're right. And they're right. I, mean, I know it's it's not something we can do on our own. And um, and so we're um, we've got already had many many volunteers sign up to help us out at home when the babies come, and uh, with other variety of things. And we're um, incredibly grateful for that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess it is an opportunity to, to be served, and we're, we're uh, that's you know that's a humbling thing for us for sure. Yeah. And it's amazing that God planned this through our whole life. It's just an amazing story. Yeah, I could not have imagined this. You guys have been married how long? 13 years tomorrow. And how did you guys meet? Did you meet doing, doing uh, missionary work at church? Or? Oh, well. <laughs> well, we were six years old, next door neighbors down in South America. And um, I yelled at her, don't touch my bike, stupid girl. And <laughs> Love ever since. No, not quite. But um, we were, uh, that's what my dad remembers me saying to her. And uh, so we knew each other there, but uh, we didn't actually meet again until we were uh, in college. We didn't go to college together, but we met through mutual friends in, in 96 and um, had a much better relationship after that. <laughs> and, and that's when he, his favorite drink began to be coffee. <laughs> Isaac likes to tease Gavin because he doesn't like coffee, and I love coffee, especially now that I've delivered. <laughs> it's amazing how much better stuff tastes. Thank you all for being here as a special event. Uh, most of us will never meet a family who delivered quintuplets ever again, even those of us in the medical profession. And I know we'll never meet a more special one than this. Thank oh, you you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you.